Hey everyone, we got Summer Sniper Faceless yesterday. I actually went ahead yesterday and did my last pull on the banner because I was at 9 out of 10 and I was like, hmm, 4.5k for Summer Faceless, pity. Sounds about right. I didn't get anything worth out of it, so I didn't miss anything. I got my Summer Faceless. She is still EX0 though, I will awaken her probably next week or so. We'll see. But yeah, just so you guys know. Anyway, I got her. She's okay. We'll find out more about her right now. So, let's begin. Summer Sniper Faceless, base form. She only has one form. She's a super limit burst unit, as you might know already. She's a water super limit burst finisher. All right, um, abilities, passives. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that she's a stacking unit. And the other thing is, you see the Japanese names, the, the wiki was not updated at the time of this video. It is currently almost midnight on Thursday, so wiki wasn't updated. I hope it is for Frisia and um, Shinju Do. Anyway, as you can see, um, she is a stacking, magic stacking unit from Focus, which is the top line here. Uh, you have to stack it three times, which isn't much trouble if you have it for, for, for example, say EX plus three. You do have enough time to stack her LB, uh, not stack her, but stack her magic and do all the necessary things. But much like most um, super limit burst units, she has a very bad grounders. It's only 30% uh, water amplification. It's only 80% magic increase. And she doesn't even have a good LB damage increase. So all she has is basically her 200% super limit burst LB damage increase, which every unit gets. But I feel like it's just bad. I mean, the cool thing is 150 insect killer. It's it's still rare. The other units that have insect killer are um, Laswell, Neo Vision Laswell that is, and Neo Vision Awakened Eurasia on her insect stratagem. Um, so it's something, I guess. She's much like Laswell, though. Laswell also has it only for himself, the insect killer. Whereas uh, Eurasia has that 100% insect killer for everyone on the party. Other than that, her uh, seven, turn 7 cooldown, 350x. It reads fairly well, but keep in mind, it's just 350x. It's not going to hit super hard. But it does fill 30 LB gauge for the entire party. She does have 120 imperils to ice and water, which is fine. I feel like on chaining abilities, this is this is okay. We'll get to my rant in a minute though. Um, the passive side of things, nothing too surprising. She does have 200% to aquatics and insects innately, which is good for these types of enemies. Um, she has, two, um, let me see. Only 100% true dual wheel mech, which I personally don't like. Oh, she has actually 300% insect killer with her TMR equipped. I just saw that. But yeah, she only has 100% true dual wheel mech. So if you don't wear two of her STMR, you have to kind of uh, sacrifice another slot for it, which I feel like is eh. At least she has the 6x cap, but that's to be expected from two dual wheel units. Okay, so let's check her magic. It's nothing too fancy. It's just a uh, uh, Blissega and um, Waterga, so nothing too fancy here. With Waterga being the better one at uh, Awaken plus 3. The uh, LB and SLB, basically the same with just more things on the SLB. The thing I don't like is, like I mentioned with all other SLB units, they only have a 125 Imperil. I will mention this again, if it's an SLB unit, I feel like 130% imperil to the element should be bare minimum. She also only amps herself by 35% water, which I feel like is way too low, this should be 50. But I guess that that's reserved for premiums only. Funnily enough, she increases insect and aquatic by 100. She does the same or more to insect on her grounders, so mood point that LB here. Or that super limit burst, I think it's bad. I mean, no boss is going to survive the first SLB, or is actually not supposed to. But yeah, the, the damage itself at 300x, water magic damage, it's fine. However, you might have noticed, 
it's water magic. It cannot be imbued, it's not physically typed, it's actually magic magic typed, so no imbues work. She is hard locked to water, sadly, and thus will have very limited use. It is a cheaper one though, at 30 LB cost, as you can see. Alright, moving on to the Trust Master and Super Trust Master. Trust Master is a Materia, 4 LB Crystals per turn and 50 True Dual Wheel Mac. Um, it's an okay TMR, honestly. I do like the 4 LB Crystals per turn. Um, I, personally though, if, if anything has True Dual Wheel Mac on, Magic on it, a Trust Master that is, I do prefer it to also have ma Magic percent or killers or I don't know LB well LB would be a little bit too overpowered but you you get the gist I would much more prefer a magic percent than for LB crystals especially because she's a super limit burst unit and super limit burst units fill the LB entirely when the super limit burst becomes available kind of a mood point here the STMR is a gun 190 magic, so it's a little bit weaker than the Chronicle weapon from Four Winds Faisalus. That is 195 magic. But this one has 50% true dual wield magic and 500 static magic for Faisalus variants only. So it's it's a great gun for magic true dual wield users, and um, Yigni would probably prefer one, for example, as well as obviously Faisalus herself. But it's a gun. Meaning, in item world, whenever you have a bad streak of rares, this the rares will come flying for this gun. Because, well, it's 40% attack. Totally useless. And that is why the comment is there for sarcastic reasons. It's great on a surf, like I mentioned. It's also great on Yigni when you go for a gun build. And pairs very well with the current gun meta, though. So, truth be told, it's decent. It's good. Uh, I, I will get it eventually, but I'm not super keen on having it right now especially because angela who's the real deal in magic dps she's she's more flexible and prefers the gun of uh, four winds faceless anyway due to the higher magic all right the vision card 60 base magic 60 base spirit at level 10 which is super low the passives aren't too fancy anyway 50 magic and spirit from one and four combined and at level 10 you either gain or you gain both technically uh, 50 magic and spirit through single wield, which is cool, and 50 magic spirit through dual wield. It's a trash card in general, I would say, especially due to the low stats, but the 50 true uh, spirit through dual wield through single wield, they actually keep it from being one of the worst ones. And it's um, the card will potentially never see any real use because we do have Pauses STMR, we do have Freezias STMR, so we don't really need this card at all. Even though a card slot is not the same as a material slot, but I guess you get the gist why use this bad card when you can use a 115 Magic or Spirit card instead. All right. The damage calculation assumptions, nothing changed here. We are using still the same old, same old. If you want to read through it, I would suggest pausing this video. This is the Faisalus build I came up with. Pretty good. So we are also accounting for the 300% magic that she can gain from focusing up. And yeah, um, just the standard stuff. 300% demon killer, chain cap, well, chain cap. Uh, the chain cap cloves are on this build because it's the highest magic cloves, obviously. And I always use one of the two, so either the chain cap helmet or the chain cap, cap cloves, but never both. Right, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, one big thing to mention here is Blue Storm does not, the DLB damage and the 500 static magic on it, they do not apply to Shoreline Faisalus. Mm -hmm. The game states that the gun only does it to the old Faisalists, but not the new one. Alright, and this is uh, the result. Ignoring Angela, Faisalus sits at a decent spot. And to be fair, she is, technically speaking, the best water mage. So, it's still something. She's still up there with all the top DPS, but she is only 60 point, uh, 67.7%. 67.7% of Angela's damage and 
Yeah, with Angela being so flexible, I feel like there is no competition. I hope you, I really hope you guys pulled for Angela because she is going to remain at the top spot for a very, very long time. All right, but so I mean, it's a decent result regardless. So yeah, how does she fare in the meta? Um, she's the best water mage, like I just mentioned in the game. If you don't count Angela, um, all she does is uh, or one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you play with her is that. All she really does is powering up and fire her way away her SLB every three to five turns, depending on your X level. The kid is super boring, it's super bad. Can't use her chain moves as she will lose the valuable storing stacks. She only has the 35% water M for self, meaning you kind of have to bring Lord of the Seas Nicole along with her for all the necessary buffs, especially the stat buffs. Nicole does 350, 250 LB buff too, which Faisalus doesn't have herself. She has 280 magic at best and 200 LB at best. So Nicole is a strict must-have pick for whenever you bring Faisalus. And um, a thing I really don't understand is why the SLB provides less killers than the Grandis. It's beyond me how Alum overlooked this fact. So yeah, should you pull? If you missed out on Angela and want a strong water mage, She's your go-to girl, I would say. But being locked to the element um, and the magic affinity, so you cannot use physical killers, you cannot, you cannot use abuse, she'll see no use in um, stages that are not water. So Dark Visions, Vision World, whenever a stage wants you to use, say, fire, light, whatever, anything but water, Faisalus uh, has to be benched. She's also useless in Clash for... All the same reasons above, and she has no Brave Shift. Her kit is useless, so hmm, no real purpose in Clash. So summary, summary, summarizing all of this, skip unless you're a fan of hers, and also skip unless you're chasing the decent STMR. So I only got her because, well, I was what 4,500 lapis close to the pity, might as well, right? All right, and that is it for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. And just to uh, mention this, I, I don't even know if many of you are watching outros, but every day we'll have a review today. So on tomorrow, Saturday, we will take a look at Frisia. The review is almost done. I, I'm going to record this tomorrow though on Friday. So today for you guys. And on Sunday, I will do my uh, Shinju review. I haven't even started on this yet. So, oops. Um, that's still in the making and I will also do my top five um, underrated units on Saturday and on Sunday we'll be looking at the worst five Neo Vision units in the game right now. So that's the plan for the weekend. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of the Friday evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're from. See you then. Bye bye.